What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, my introduction to Flipper videos are some of my most popular videos, so every six months or so, I try to make an update for them because so many cool methods keep coming out. Now, I've been waiting for a while to do this video because I wanted to make sure that every single part of the process was at least easier and faster. Well, you're in luck because today I've got every single part of the Flipper Zero installation and setup process streamlined and easier than ever. Now, that's not to say that my previous videos for setting up Flipper are completely obsolete. There's actually a ton of great information on those. So if you just got a Flipper, I highly recommend watching those as well. Except maybe my Flipper Zero How to Be a Hacker Now video. That one's got some pretty low production values, but the other one's great. So today I'm going to walk you through the entire process of updating firmware, installing custom firmware, adding all of the apps you could want, all the files you need, and I'm going to show you how to update the Wi-Fi dev board two ways. I've been waiting for a while for this one. It's going to be fun. Let's get at it. All right, so if you've seen my last videos, you know I just picked up a brand new transparent flipper, so that's what we're gonna set up today. First thing you're gonna wanna do, screen protector, because it's way too easy to scratch the screen, and if you scratch it, you're gonna be bummed. So, whoops, if you didn't actually get one when you bought it, uh, just cut one out of like a, a one for a phone or for anything else, but cover your screens. All right, so that brings us to the micro SD card. Now there's a ton of places to get them. I recommend buying them online beforehand. They're way cheaper. I found that 32 or 64 gig typically are the least expensive ones, but you don't need a big SD card. Literally people are putting like 128. None of that's necessary. You'll never really get past like even eight gigs, 16 gigs is plenty. Get whatever is inexpensive and easy, uh, but make sure it's a name brand. I mean, we know SanDisk makes great ones. If you're gonna order them from AliExpress, you know, you might get what you pay for. So we're just gonna go ahead and take our flipper, take our micro SD card, insert one into the other. Do notice it goes in upside down, so you should see the contacts when it goes in, and push it all the way in until it clicks. I just cut my fingernail, so this is really hard. See, it didn't go in all the way, try it again. Eh, there we go. Now it's in, it's flush, it's in, in, in. Cool. All right, so now that we got our SD card in there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna update to the latest official firmware before we do anything else. So let's hop into QFlipper and let's get that done. Oh yeah, PS, USB-C cable, plug that sucker in. Use the cable that came with it unless you have another cable that you're positive is both power and data because not all USB cables carry data. Important note. All right, here we are at our desktop. So first, I guess I might as well show you where to get QFlipper, but just QFlipper. All you gotta do, type it in, boom, 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 and we should get our download, QFlipper right now. All you have to do, download that, run it, install, ready to go. I won't do that again and bore everybody, so we'll close this, and then all we have to do is open up QFlipper, and you can see right here is my flipper. So simply just gonna click the update button, and it's gonna update. So we'll wait for this to finish. It takes a little while, but the official firmware is not as big as custom firmware, so this is actually a lot faster than it's gonna be later on. Hey, and it's done. Hit continue and firmware update success. Oh yeah, one quick thing to mention is that if you click on the little wrench right here, you can change which branch of firmware you're installing. I always choose the development firmware update channel. It's got the latest and greatest features. Theoretically, it might have some stability issues, but quite honestly, I really don't run into problems at all. So now that we have that going, let's close QFlipper, very important, and we're gonna navigate over to flipc.org. Flipc.org is a fantastic little website that allows us to add apps to our Flipper. Now you can also install with the mobile app the mobile app for Flipper actually has its own app store, and that's the officially supported app store. This is unofficial, so, you know, some things on here may crash, you may run into issues, but it shouldn't be that big a deal. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna click on ESP Flasher, and we're gonna install that. Make sure, so right now, Unleash Firmware, we're gonna switch it to official, and then we're gonna check the uh, development release candidate, there we go, and crash. So of course these things happen and you'll notice it's on the development channel. Let's see if we do the RC release candidate. 
Okay, so this will work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flash release candidate onto my flipper and then we can install it and go from there. Again, that's kind of one of the drawbacks of running development builds is that sometimes they are not compatible with everything. Let me reflash flipper. We'll be right back with you. All right, we're back. We've got release candidate installed onto our flipper. We're going to click the install button here and then it's going to open up a serial port. One quick thing to remember is if you have QFlipper open, it will not work. So be careful of that. Hit connect and uploading. Everything's done. Huzzah! So if we open up QFlipper again, I can actually control the screen so you can see what's going on. So, whoops, that's SD card. Here we go. So if we go into our apps, and now we go into GPIO, we have a brand new ESP Flasher app. So we can open that up. Super cool. So this allows us to install different firmwares to our ESP32 Wi-Fi dev boards. So now that you know how to install applications, now you need files on your flipper itself because without files, you can't really do much. You need, you know, your bad USB files, your sub gigahertz files, your IR files. Well, I made a super easy way to get all of those all at one time. What I did was I made a repository that forks Uber Guido's repository because Uber is the one who started all of the file hoarding that he does. And what mine has is just the folders that you need for the SD card. So we can just do this one fork of the repository and everything works easy first time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the URL and we're gonna use GitHub Desktop. You can just Google GitHub Desktop, super easy to find it. We're gonna go to File, Clone Repository, paste the URL right there, and there we go. I have to give it a, a unique name because I already have this on folder, and then just click Clone. We're gonna give it a second. It's gonna clone that repository directly onto our computer. No zip files, no compressing, none of it. Two very boring minutes later. Hey, and we're done. What's gonna ask you if you wanna to contribute to the project or use it for your own purposes. What we're doing now, we're just gonna select for my own purpose and hit continue. Now you might notice that when you start downloading things from GitHub, you'll run into Windows Defender yelling at you. If that's the case, you can just open up Windows Security we're going to go to virus and threat protection. I've got it turned off right now because it's really annoying during videos, but we're going to go to manage settings for virus and threat protection. And then we're going to scroll down to add or remove exclusions. So when we click on that, it's going to allow us to add our GitHub directory and it won't scan those files because some of the stuff on Uber's uh, repository will get flagged by Defender and it does get mad about it. So we'll close all this and then let's take a look at our files. All right. Here we are, open up GitHub, and that's where I just put them right there. So this has all of the files that we need. Now we don't need the GitHub ignore and uh, module parts in here, but they're not really gonna hurt anything. So for the moment, we're not gonna worry about it. Now we're gonna wanna remove the SD card from the flipper itself to transfer these files. You can do it through QFlipper, but it will take very, very, very long, and I don't recommend it. So I'm gonna pop my SD card out, plug it into an adapter that I have, and let's drag files over. All right, so as soon as I plugged it in, it just popped up right here on the screen. And all we're gonna do is simply drag and drop. This is why we do it this way. So we're just gonna take all of these folders. Again, we don't need any of these files. We don't need .git here. We're gonna just take this, we're gonna drag it right over to our SD card and let it rip. This is gonna take all of the best files from Uber's repository, plus a few extras I threw in there, and it's gonna put it on your flipper. It's gonna take a few minutes because I think there's something like 50,000 files here, but when that's done, your flipper is gonna have everything you need, at least from a file standpoint. All right, so that took the better part of forever, but again, we only gotta do this once, so it's not a big deal. I'm gonna pop this SD card back out of my PC, pop it back into the flipper and get back at it. And let's take a minute to give a shout out to today's sponsor. PCBWay. Now, you know, I talk about their PCDB production capabilities all the time. They can do some really amazing things. Look, I know it's not easy to design and produce these things. That's why PCBWay has got you covered. They have virtually limitless capabilities as far as production goes. So anything you can think of, chances are PCBWay can do it for you. They can make standard PCBs, flexible PCBs. They can assemble PCBs for you. They can 3D print. They can do almost anything you need to make your project a reality. Take a look down below in the description for a link to get yourself a free instant quote. As always, thanks a lot, PCBWay, for your continued support. Let's get back at it. All right, so now that we have all of our files, let's go ahead and start thinking about installing some custom firmware. So I can go ahead and close this, close this, and let's go to Rogue Master. Dot net. Here we go. And what's really cool about all pretty much all of the custom firmwares right now is that they have 
an online flasher. So if we go to the GitHub link right here, and then that takes us to the latest release. If you click on the web installer, click connect. Also, I have to close QFlipper, otherwise this will not work. Click connect, pick my flipper here, and then all I have to do is click install. This is gonna install it directly to my flipper. I don't have to do anything. What's nice with the custom firmwares as well is a lot of them do have a lot of the files that we just added through GitHub. So, you know, so you, some of it you don't have to do if you do install custom firmware. However, I installed a lot more files than they could possibly put on just their firmware. You can see there's 50,000 files and how big all of that was. You can't bundle that into firmware. You have to kind of pick and choose. So now that we've added our own resources, once we add the custom firmware, we're gonna have all sorts of good apps and stuff on there that we won't have to download. Now it is important to note that it does take a while to install firmware. So if it's you know updating resources, what seems like a really long time, just let it go. Don't interrupt it, it'll be fine. Hey, and we're finally done. And it says Rogue Master Firmware Update Success. Now there is another way to install firmware, which I'm gonna show you, which is not quite as easy, or even though it's really freaking easy, but it's a way of installing firmware uh, more manually. So let's close this and I'm gonna download the latest version of the dev build of XFW, which is only available currently on their Discord. So if I go on over to Discord here, and if I go into the extreme discord, go to reaction roles, you can click on dev updates, which will unlock the dev updates channel. Scroll down and we're gonna find the latest release, which is right here. And then we're just gonna download the TGZ. Visit sites, it's gonna download it. We're gonna drop this directly onto our desktop and then it's gonna open up QFlipper. Here we go. We're gonna click install from file right here. And then we're gonna select our file, click install, and just wait again. So this is gonna install the latest dev version of XFW if you have a .tgz file. Hey, and just like that, we are all set. Fantastic. So there we have it. We've got our brand new Flipper Zero. It's got all the files we need. It's got custom firmware. It's got apps. It's got absolutely everything. That leads us to the last piece of the puzzle, which is the Wi-Fi dev board. If you didn't get one of these, you're missing out. Honestly, this is one of the best things there is for Flipper Zero. With the Wi-Fi board, you can do so many cool things. You can test Wi-Fi networks. You can use Evil Portal, which actually creates a an access point that you can enter in your custom index.html, which will actually farm credentials. There's a whole bunch of really cool stuff you can do with this thing. Now, right out of the box, this thing comes with black magic installed, which is effectively just a wireless log viewer. Most people aren't really using that except for the developers, but we can flash this with different firmware. Now, when I first started doing this tutorial, I used to use Skeleton Man's flasher. Well, there's a couple different ways of doing that now, including the brand new FC flasher, and we can even flash it with the Flipper Zero itself. So let me show you how to do it. All right, so first things first, we gotta plug the board into our computer. So there's a boot button here and a reset button there. We're gonna hold the boot button, and then we're gonna plug this in, and then we're ready to go. Let's pop on over the desktop and we can get this flashing. All right, so here we have it, the brand new FZ flasher. What a great job Zardos and InfoSec Red for setting these things up. One thing we wanna do real quick, if we click the how to, it's gonna open up a window here because we do need a driver. So click on Silicon Labs right here. I'm on Windows, so we'll go to the Universal Windows driver and it's gonna save a zip to our desktop. I've already done this before, but again, for the sake of argument, let's just do the workflow. We're gonna extract all, click extract. Once this opens right here, all we gotta do is right click and we can go to install and there's our driver. I'm gonna hit cancel because I've already done this, but yeah, it's literally that easy. So now we can close this, close this, go back to our flasher and click connect. It should pop up right here and say ESP32 S2. All we gotta do is click connect and do, 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 here we go. So we're gonna select our board right here, which is the Flipper Zero dev board. Now you'll notice that there's two versions right here, the dev board and the dev board with the SD card. There is an SD card mod for the dev board that you can physically put a SD card on it. It, it does use different driver, not drivers, but it uses different firmware. So we have the normal board right there version. So the latest version is the latest version of uh, Marauder firmware that we're gonna install. So Marauder's right here. We're gonna install the latest version on our Flipper dev board. Hit program and it's just gonna go at it. Takes a little while. 
be very patient, but this should finish and not be a problem. Do not turn off or unplug your board. Flashing firmware. They tried to make it as obvious as possible. Do not unplug your board. A flashing process completed. Fantastic. Now, if say you wanted to run Evil Portal, you just switch it over there and click program. It's literally that easy. Boom, and we're done. But hey, what if you want to change your different firmwares for your Wi-Fi dev board on the go? Well, guess what? We can do that too. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug this sucker in. And then let's use the ESP flasher by Coco Code to get it done. I'm going to pop on over to the desktop and open up QFlipper so you can see my screen a little bit easier. All right, here we are in QFlipper. So we can just open this up and we'll see a little bit larger here. So if we go to apps and then go down to GPIO right here, and then we scroll down to ESP Flasher, we can actually go ahead and dual boot this board. It's super, super, super cool. So all we gotta do is go to Quick Flash, ESP32 S2, which is what the Wi-Fi dev board is it's right there. Click on that. And we're gonna select Evil Portal and Marauder. And then boom, immediately it works. It's so fast, it's so easy. Man, I love this app. Hey, and we're finally done. You will notice that this process takes substantially longer than the web flasher does. However, you know, it's doing it on the flipper itself. Plus we also just installed both firmwares. So you'll see if we go back here, You'll notice that now we have both Evil Portal and Marauder. So right now it's running Evil Portal, but we can select Marauder, give it a second, and boom. Yeah, right now it's got Marauder running. How cool is that? Man, that was a lot of stuff to do, but I mean, now we have everything set up. We have dual booting on our Wi-Fi dev board. We have any custom firmware we want. We have all the files, all the apps. We have everything. So now it's on you what to do. You can test your Wi-Fi networks, you can run BLE spam, literally anything you want to do. Now you have the tools for it. As always, if you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. And of course, thank each and every one of you guys. You are absolutely the best. We're going to catch you next time.